thank you for welcoming us back into your home for Shabbat in your home. We're going to now kick off the Shabbat with the lighting of the candles. So we encourage you to go ahead and get your candles ready and the elements so we can participate in the table. Baruch Hatadonai Eloheinu Melech Haolam, Asher Kitshanu Ben Metzvotav, Vetzivanu, Lehiotor Legoim Ben Atanlanu, Et Yeshua Meshechenu, Or Haolam. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe. You have sanctified us with your word. You commanded us to be a light unto the nations, and you gave us Yeshua, our Messiah, who is the light of the world. Amen. Amen. Lord, we invite your presence yes. into all of our homes. Thank you for being our rest. Thank you for giving us this time uh, set apart to be with our families and with you. And we invite you as our head guest. In Yeshua's name we pray. Amen. And Yeshua lifted up the cup and he prayed this prayer in Hebrew. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam borei pri hagafen. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the fruit of the vine. Yeshua, we remember your sacrifice for us. We remember your blood that was poured out for us, that you are our atoning sacrifice. You took our place, that with that, all of our sin has been washed away, and we can be united again with the Father. Thank you for giving us everything that we need for life and godliness. It's in your name we pray. Amen. And then he lifted up the bread and he prayed this in Hebrew. Baruch atah Adonai Eloheinu melech haolam hamotzi lechem min haaretz. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, King of the universe, who brings forth the bread from the land. Yeshua, we thank you that you do give us everything we need. We thank you that you gave us your body, that you took the place of where we were supposed to be. And you do, you're a good provider for our house in all times. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. And now I'll just pray a prayer over all of you and over my, my family. Father, I thank you for our families. I just ask that on this Shabbat that you would bless us and keep us, Lord, that your face would shine upon us. Thank you for uh, always being with us and ever-present help in time of need, Lord. And for everyone, wherever they are watching this, I ask that they would feel your presence, Lord, with them. And that they would, in all things, acknowledge you. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. We have some great resources that are available so that you can partake with Shabbat, the table experience in your home, and also during the different feasts that happen all year, we have uh, on uh, celebration.org forward slash resources. Now that direct link and the verbiage that everything that you need will be in the description with this video, but I encourage you just go and check it out. We have the whole story, which is what we're going through right now. We, you know, we came out of Sukkot, we came to the end of the reading, I spoke about this uh, last week, and now we're, be, we're beginning the readings again from Genesis, going back all the way through uh, Revelation, and as we're sharing this whole story, we're, we're kind of re-digging. That's why I like about going back through the scripture again, because when you've gone through it once, you didn't get everything. It's like when you've watched a movie, there's things in the movie that are uh, that stick out more the next time. Like, I don't remember. Did, is this the same movie that I watched the last time? So there, there's something about always going back and rereading the scripture that I have always found to be so en enriching in me and my family's life. So we have the whole story. We have the table, the Shabbat guide, and we have the sacred time uh, feast guide. And everything that you need is uh, downloadable. You can watch it on your iPhones, on, on your tablets or on your computers. I don't know if we have it yet for the watch, but 
you know, eventually I'm sure all technology is going to be going that direction. So thank you for joining me. We're doing a, a short study on the life of Noah. His name in Hebrew is Noah, and the name actually means rest or peace. Now I want you to put this, this story in context a little bit because we came out of the creation story. God created the earth, and then you have immediate conflict with Cain and Abel. Cain kills Abel, puts a curse on his life, on Cain, which also puts a curse on the ground from the very beginning. So there's, there's a lot happening to where there's this, this people group called the Nephilim that you, maybe you've, there's YouTubes on that. I'm not going to go into that. Dr. Heiser has an amazing uh, videos and research on that. So I encourage you to, to go to YouTube. You can watch all that on there. But the purpose of this is just to re- Imagine, kind of bring us back to the story of, of Noah. Life right now in this season of Noah is chaotic. God is already wishing that he hadn't created everything because people have just messed it all up, given in to our sinful natures, lust of the flesh. And it's interesting that the scriptures that I'm going to read to from the, the New Testament say that as is the time of Noah, so it will be then in the last days. I mean, it's like you can see it everywhere. There's chaos. People are giving in to their own fleshly desires. And it's almost like everyone's out for their own, for what they can get out of life. It's not about your neighbor. But it's like, why do we, you know, we, we say every week, you know, we're celebrating Shabbat. Shabbat brings us around the table. It's honoring the Lord. It's separating from chaos. It's separating from the kingdom of darkness bringing the, the, the light of the kingdom into our home. As for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord. So let's kick off right here to where the, the story starts uh, in Genesis 5, 29. When Lamech had lived 182 years, wow, he fathered a son and called his name Noah, saying, out of the ground that the Lord has cursed. Remember the story in Genesis when... When sin entered the world, God cursed the ground. He fathered a son and called his name Noah, saying, Out of the ground that the Lord has cursed, this one, his son, he's saying that this one, Noah, shall bring us relief from our work and from the painful toil of our hands. Now, I want you to realize that there's types and shadows in Scripture. God is telling the same story, and it's almost like this beautiful uh, retelling all the way to the very end. And we're going to see that in the life of Noah, that he's like a type and shadow of God's character and his personality. I'm not saying that Noah was, okay? I'm saying it's a type and shadow that Noah was in Scripture. According to Scripture, it says he was a righteous man. All I'm saying is that Noah exemplified, he wanted to mirror who God was in his character. And he wasn't perfect. But he did the best he could, and in Scripture it calls him a righteous person. So let's look over here in Genesis 6, and it's going to give the full context of why is Lamech saying that this child is going to help bring and deliver us from the curse of the land and from everything that's kind of going on. And in, starting in verse 1, When man began to multiply on the face of the land, and daughters were born to them, the sons of God saw that the daughters of man were attractive, and they took as their wives any they chose. Then the Lord said, My spirit shall not abide in man forever, for he is flesh. His days shall be a hundred and twenty. The Nephilim were on the earth in those days, and also afterward when the sons of men came into the daughters of man, they bore children of them. These were the mighty men who, who were of old, the men of renown. And let's go down to uh, verse 8. But Noah found favor in the eyes of the Lord. How did he find favor in the eyes of the Lord? He was separating himself totally until, his, until the Lord's ways. These are the generations of Noah. Noah was a righteous man, blameless in his generation. Noah walked with God. And I find it interesting that he's, he has distinction. Like his names also separate him. So I... I think it's also very careful, like, what are we naming? Like, what are the, 
what are the confessions that are coming out of mouth? What are we allowing to to overtake our minds? You know, it's it's interesting that when you repeat all the negative stuff in life, what are you what are you dwelling on? All that negativity, and then it's interesting. It almost starts creating like an atmosphere of negativity. I mean, do you enjoy being around people that all it's like life is horrible, the sky is falling? And there's just no hope for any of us. I mean, is that like an enjoyable Shabbat table conversation? No. I mean, we have the hope of the world. His name is Jesus, Yeshua, as our Messiah, the hope of the whole world. So we should be the ones carrying uh, this great message. But you see in this context that the world as it was, was horrible. And here is this, uh, here is this person who's living his life separated unto the Lord, exemplifying the character of God. And he is, in, fa- in effect, being he, his father prophesied over him that he's going to be the savior of the world. And what happens? God speaks to him and says, because of your righteousness, because of your righteous deeds, because you are separated unto me, I'm going to spare you and your household and gives him the dimensions to build a boat. I mean, can you imagine that you, you don't know what a boat is, but the creator of heaven and earth tells you to build this thing. And you're, you come home to your family, uh, hey, everyone, I was uh, walking, and the Lord just said, hey, Noah, come over here. And we just talked, and I'm, I'm building something, and I have these uh, direct measurements. And uh, um, we're building a, a structure, and it's supposed to protect us from everything. I mean, th- at this time, there were no like boat structures that were this massive. There, there was just no context for it. So you can imagine being different, set apart. There is distinction in his life. And as he's building this thing out, people are coming over and laughing at him because he's saying, Noah's telling everyone the end of the world is here and you're all going to be wiped out unless you join me on this gigantic boat. It's like, it's fascinating that the faith that he had in God regardless of what anyone told him of who he was or what he was doing, maybe even his family telling him, this is crazy, it didn't matter. That Noah, Noah said, as for me and my house, we're going to serve the Lord and we're going to demonstrate it by being obedient. And in Noah's obedience, it saved him and his household. Likewise, the sacrifice of Jesus, Yeshua the Messiah, His obedience to the Father brought about the salvation, not just of the world, but the whole earth. That what Yeshua demonstrated for us, that when He poured out His blood for us, that He demonstrated before the heavens and the earth, once and for all, atonement was made. And thank God that because of that, you and I who are believers in Yeshua, we are saved that we are safe from the world, but we also have to exemplify and push out the world of chaos from our households. And Shabbat is a great way. It's a great uh, context uh, for what we are, the the family of God. So come down to Matthew 24, and I want to connect this really quickly. Matthew 24, 36. But concerning that day and hour, no one knows. Nobody knows when Yeshua is going to return. We don't know the very day. Not even the angels of heaven, nor the Son. Jesus doesn't know the very day. But the Father only. For as were the days of Noah, so will be the coming of the Son of Man. For in those days before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving a marriage, until the day when Noah entered the ark. You see this correlation going on? Like what's happening right now in the world? What happened back then? And that these very words written in Matthew are connecting the two back together. This is the whole story. And this is why it's important to see that this is one uh, book. It's not, this is old, this is new, and do out with that. And, you know, it's not out with the old and with the new. For in those days before the flood, they were eating, drinking, marrying, and giving a marriage until the day when Noah entered the ark. And they were unaware until the flood came and swept them all away, so it will be with the Son of Man. And that's why it is so important that we are continuing to to go back to this story and revisiting things to constantly remind ourselves that we need to be alert. We need to be awake. We need to be the ones that are set apart so that we can carry this message to our friends and to our neighbors to let them know that the, the times and the seasons that we're in 
are the, the return of the king. The, uh, the Sukkot is a big, big celebration. It has this uh, feeling and this sense that the king is returning. And so when we go back to the beginning, we go to Passover, that's the spring feast, right? So as we're going to head into, into spring, that's the telling of when Jesus came the first time. And the fall feasts are when he's going to come again. And that's why it's so important. For, I cannot uh, heighten on this a- anymore that we, we need to be diligent. We need, we need to pay attention to what's going on. We can't just easily give ourselves into everything that catches our, our eyes to go this way and that way. We must stay focused on whom we serve and why we serve him. And that we're, we're keeping our families uh, together and in, the, in, this, in this whole story. And I, I want to point out one more thing uh, before I let you go. Um, in Exodus 34, 6, there, there's, a, there's an expression here about the Lord's goodness. Like, no matter what season you're in, I, I want to declare that the Lord is good and His mercy endures forever. It doesn't matter what's happening. He is the comforter. I want you to check this out. Exodus 34, 6 through 7. The Lord... The Lord, a God gracious and uh, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness. And I want to share this word gracious. It's actually the word rachum. And what does rachum mean? It means compassionate. I want you to see that the Father has this compassion for us. And in this word that He is gracious, that He is compassionate, It's the story of seeing a mother caring for her child, that she wraps that child in her arms, caring for the baby so that nothing will harm it. Like the nourishment, everything that's needed is right there in the mother's arms. And the Lord, He Himself, is compassionate for you. The Lord loves you. He cares for you. He wants us to be in this family, and He wants to demonstrate His compassion to you, but you have to allow and invite Him in to do so. The Lord is a gentleman. Father God is a gentleman. He is not going to barge in there unless he's invited. So I encourage you on Shabbat, on tonight, invite him, invite his presence into your home and see the goodness of the Lord in your house for you and your home. Now we're going to transition over to a time of worship with my dad again, but I'm going to pronounce the blessing over you and I want you to experience his wholeness in your home. Now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make His face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift up His very countenance upon you and give you His peace. Yivarechecha Adonai ve'yishmorecha Ya'er Adonai panevelecha v'chonecha Isa Adonai panevelecha ve'yasem lecha shalom B'shem Yeshua HaMashiach Sar Shalom In the name of Jesus, our Messiah, the Prince of all peace. God bless you. Hmm, Noah, a resting place, peace. My grandson, Shiloh, man of peace. Yerushalayim, city of peace, Jerusalem. Our king is the king of peace. He's, hmm, I love, I love this song from way long ago. You are my hiding place. You always fill my heart with songs of deliverance. Whenever I am afraid, I will trust in
side, enjoying your family, the table, the provision of the Lord, and trust him that if you don't go back out there in the field again with your pickaxe and your hoe and your rake, that somehow he's going to make it work out for you. Hmm. Just something to think about. Here's also a really neat little song from the Siddur, the Jewish prayer book that declares the same thing. songs like this, you don't hear the name Jesus because his name in Hebrew and other languages are all throughout this stuff. In fact, the way that second song starts, 
or the one of the tags. Baruch Baruch It's the way all Hebrew prayer starts. Blessed are you, O Lord our God, you are the king of the universe, and you've sanctified us with your word and your commandments. You've set us apart. You've separated us and made us a holy people. Not bad, huh? So have a blessed Shabbat as we continue in our worship. I want to thank you all for partnering with us during this season. Since my dad hasn't been able to travel, your faithful giving has literally been the life source to being able to do all of these productions. If you will join us as a world partner for $60 or more, we want to send you a thank you. Roar from Zion Instrumental was something that we created so that you could have worship music without all the singing during your times of prayer. And also, thank you all who have been giving uh, regularly every week and haven't joined as a world partner, if you'd like to, you can do so, and we'll, also, we'll send this to you as a thank you. But again, from my family to yours, God bless you and keep you, and thank you for all that you're doing.